Cork's Red FM General Election Coverage 2016. Well, if that's the attitude that you wish to take, Neil, then that's fine. Well, what attitude do you want you, me to take? I'm telling do you, you want me to roll that, out a red carpet telling, and say that everything's cool? I don't want cool? you to roll out any red carpet. I'm telling you here in I Cork, mean, the information I'm giving you is accurate. You accept that. And the information I'm giving you is accurate. Maybe you don't recognise that. I do recognise it because I deal with it every day. I deal with people who are homeless. I deal with people so do who... I, actually. Yeah, well, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. I deal with people who are living in their cars. They're living in travel lodges. I deal with the guy who's living down in the marine, actually, out of a box. I deal with people who you wouldn't give a break to on their mortgage, but yet you, you allowed the banks to write down debt for developers. But nobody gave people who were scalped when they paid top dollar for their houses a break. You never instructed the banks to reduce their repayments and to give them a bit of leeway. Why didn't you do that for the common man if you did it for developers? Plenty options for those who have mortgages that are in distress to sit down with the lenders and negotiate through a code of conduct presented by the central bank for every bank to be courteous and work with the people to whom they have lent money. But they're not. But the numbers are dropping seriously in terms of those who are now in mortgage. But the most vulnerable, who are the electorate, got ignored, and the banks banks screwed them, Mm. and the courts endorsed it. All right, Tisha, I've been put under fierce pressure here by your people. I wish it wasn't the case. under pressure by the people at all. I am, actually. They're all standing behind me, waving their hands and telling me to stop. 25% 25% of Cork families are lone parents, again, which is way ahead of the national average, and nearly one in five people in Cork is registered with a disability. That's shameful. For any TD out of Cork, that's shameful. Never mind the leader of the opposition. Yeah, and I've worked extremely hard in areas. Um, back in 97, I was in education, only 80% of people were finishing second level. It's now 90%. So progress was made, but it's a constant battle. It's going to take quite a long time to deal with the underlying issues uh, in terms of a disadvantage. Therefore, you need to give the government two terms. And I'll tell you why. I mean, if you're in a Grand Prix and you're winning, you don't pull in to change tyres. How can they be expected to be sure that you're the right man to take us into the future where many people aren't even sure of your past? Incidentally, you're leader now of the party 33 years, the longest in Irish political history. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of slow to use the word. It, it's almost like a dictatorship. Is it ego that keeps you there? Um, Do you regard yourself as a liability? Did you ever think of falling upon your sword and letting Mary Lou lead the party forward? Well, first of all, it's up to the party who lists them. And we have an election every year for the leader. And this isn't really about me. If I had any sense, I would go and get a life. But I believe in what I'm doing. We are very lucky that we have a team and I have been part of building that team and I've had any qualities at all in terms of politics. It is about team building and being part of a team. A very emotional Sinn Féin's Jonathan O'Brien is the latest to be elected and he took the third seat in Cork North Central as was expected. He told Red FM News why his emotions are running so high. I'm very emotional. Um, it's, it's my first election without my father, who was my biggest supporter, and I really missed him yesterday and today, so I'm very emotional at the moment. To another form of behaviour, uh, Roach's buildings up around uh, Richmond Hill, the uh, Old Yall Road area, there is a standoff, an Irish water standoff. I want to go there and just see exactly what's going on because I believe the Gardaí were also called. So how many of you residents went out this morning then? There was about 20, 25 of us. And are they elderly residents? We're all elderly up here. This is, this is uh, Sutton's buildings around, uh, around Rathmore Park. We're yeah. all, this is elderly a- area. Yeah, okay. Depending on who gets voted into power, yeah. they may never be yes. seen again, you figure. Yes, that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping. That's oh. what I'm voting about. Okay, and you're going to vote tomorrow? I'm going to vote tomorrow. Would it be rude of me to ask you about your vote? I'm going to vote for Mick. Mick is standing in my house now and Mick is on the front line with okay. us. Okay, so he's got your number one? He's got my number one. There's been highs and there's been lows in the past hour here in City Hall. After the seventh count, Mick Barry claimed the second seat in Cork North Central. Here's the moment it was announced and this is what he had to say to Red FM News. Well, uh, we're off to a new job. And we're off to a new challenge, but I think you can see the message remains the same, right? We'll be bringing the anti-water charge message into the doll, we'll be bringing the message of workers' rights into the doll, and we'll be bringing the message of real change into the doll, and we look forward to the challenge. And with support like this, how can we not succeed? What happened yesterday? You were out and about in Mayfield, was it? I just looked over. Was Darren Murphy, was he he was campaigning? He wouldn't even talk to me. One fella said to me, do you know what you'll do now, he says? 
you go home now, Susie, sit in your armchair and have a cup of tea. And I turned around and honest to God, I did say, F off to him, like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he told me to piss off. Mm-hmm. And I said, Dara, can you give me your opinion on what Andy Kenny said? Regarding Wingers, is it? Susie, he was perfectly right. He said it's the likes of you, he said he was getting at. Kathleen Lynch is the latest casualty of GE16 here in City Hall after Darren Murphy reached the quota on the 11th count. Here's the moment he was deemed elected and the reaction he had when asked how he was feeling by Red FM News. Well, I'm delighted. They're very difficult. Um election campaigns and to thank all my supporters um, and particularly I suppose to Kathleen Lynch who did a great job here in Cork uh, unfortunately you know there wasn't room for both of us on this occasion Much obliged to you, we have the Minister Simon Coveney by phone, Minister good morning Good morning Neil, hi, how are you? I'm well thank you, um, why are you uh, involved in um, what Terry Shannon and Cla- calls a cynical attempt to align yourselves with something uh, that hasn't even been signed off on yet and that is nothing more than an election stunt well, I mean, I just find it unbelievable uh, that people are trying to turn a hugely positive and important project for the city into into something negative. Here. But no matter how you spin this, there still is not a contract signed. Cork's Red FM, the election count 2016. Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to City Hall for not just the North Central and South Central constituency, but we'll also be checking in with the three other rural uh, results as they come to hand. I'm joined in studio by Simon Coveney. Welcome. Hey, Neil. Thanks for taking the time. It's kind of ironic that at this point uh, in Cork, we have three Fianna Fallers elected, and we're still waiting on the first one of you guys. What's that about? Well, it's been a bad day for Fianna Gael. You uh, called it disappointing, I think, didn't you? Yeah, well, I mean, of course it's disappointing. You know, we've... Um, um, uh, this isn't the result we wanted, but, you know, Fine Gael will still have more seats than anybody else after this election, but it's, uh, it's falling far short of, of what the hope and expectation was at the start of the campaign. And there's no point in pretending otherwise. What Jerry Bottomer like joins us in studio, seats? actually. Oh. Incidentally, you're probably on tenterhooks, are you, for the, for the fourth seat? Yeah, it's a battle. It's going to be a gargantuan struggle uh, to win it, but we're not conceding yet. It's going to go down to the last count, and... Um, you know, it's one of those elections where it just may be like... Is it very tight? Yeah, ultimately, Neil, I mean, if you look at Irish history in, in, in our lifetime, Fine Gael have gone into government with Labour to, to fix the country, to repair it after a period of, of crisis. Today, in my opinion, we haven't got a mandate to go into government. We have been told, no thank you. Elsewhere, Sinn Féin's Donica O'Leary beat Fine Gael's Simon Coveney to the third seat and exceeded all expectations. It was a bittersweet victory for Simon Coveney, who had this to say about his party colleague, Jerry Bottomer, who missed out on the fourth seat. Uh, I feel privileged to be re-elected as a TD, but I feel very, uh, very sorry for Jerry Bottomer, who I think has been an extraordinary uh, hard worker for this constituency for the last five years. Back locally in Cork East, Labour Sean Sherlock booked the national trend to become one of the country's newest TDs. He was elected on the ninth count this morning and has become one of only four Labour members so far to make it into the next hole. Sean Sherlock says he's very mixed feelings about his victory. It's a mixed uh, blessing in that, uh, you know, you're, you're, there's a sadness at the fact that so many really excellent people have lost their seats today, you know, from the Labour Party. But look, I'm, I, I, I'll just enjoy this moment now. Uh, and, you know, we have to take stock over the next while and regroup and and see where we go from there. The highs and lows of GE16 were felt powerfully across the board, but especially in Cork North West, where independent candidate John Paul O'Shea said he was gutted after losing his seat. This is what he told Red FM News when asked how he was feeling after the loss. One word, gutted. Absolutely. Look, I, I, at two o'clock today, I was going to be eliminated and written off, and we're very back with all the transfer stuff that's going on, and I didn't think I'd be in this position that I was fighting for the last seat, and uh, to have 249 votes between myself and Deputy Michael Moynihan. You know, no, that goes to say that it was a very close contest and I think uh, there's an opportunity for change there into the future and hopefully there's an opportunity for an independent candidate going forward in Cork North West. Finally, history was made in Cork Southwest after Fianna Fáil's Margaret Murphy O'Mahony took a seat in the constituency. Speaking to Red FM News after she was elected, Margaret Murphy O'Mahony is thrilled that her victory means she's made history in the constituency. Delighted, obviously, to to be topping the poll. Um, also, it's a great day for women. Uh, I've made history today. So the first lady elected from any party for Cork Southwest. So very, very proud of that.
We have uh, the Fianna Fáil leader, Mihon Martin, in studio. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Now, uh, last time out, you did uh, 17% of the first preference votes. You probably will do something in around 23% now. Is that a good day? It's a very good day, yeah. yeah it's not an A, it's probably maybe a B. Well, I think it was this, an exam. The seats is the key thing, you know. And um, uh, from, from our perspective, I mean, to go up potentially 5% in a, in a national election, in any election, is, is a very good uh, increase and you're expected um, to double your seats. Uh, yes, uh, that's what we're saying now. Maybe more than that, uh, which would be quite extraordinary uh, and quite a good result. Corks Red FM General Election Coverage 2016.